and welcome back to FlossTube University episode five. We are the FlossTube channel across the globe. We're so glad that you're here. Um, my name is Stephanie. I'm Allison. And these are short tutorials. FlossTube University are short tutorials designed to help beginner stitchers, though all are welcome. And we're making these specifically to help the people who shop in our Cross Stitch the Globe Etsy shop and buy my cross stitch patterns. But by hosting them on YouTube, anybody can find them and use them, even if you're not ever gonna stitch one of our patterns. So win, win, win. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about some names that you might find for, well, that you will find for different fabric cuts when people are talking about ordering fabric or will this fit on an X type of cloth. The most common is fat quarter, but we're going to actually start all the way at the biggest, most common one, which is a yard and work our way down. Now, um, Allison, yes. before you, Allison cross stitch for years and years and years before she entered the world of floss tube <laughs> and this crazy world of like all of us stitching the like and talking about our stitching and what did you think of like fabric sizes or measurements before you heard these terms or had you even heard these terms? I had never heard these terms before okay so Ada I knew Ada and I knew people stitched linen I didn't know what the difference was or even what what that meant um but I knew I knew Ada and I knew 14 count was what to look for and that's it <laughs> so we did a video, we've done a couple videos about different fabric counts and like what fabric counts are and how they play around with them. In this video, we're talking about fabric cut sizes. So not the size of the stitches or how many threads are in there, but like the actual piece of fabric size. Like what is the name for this piece of fabric and how is that different from the name for this size of fabric? So we're gonna start with a yard. So, um, hi, this is editing Stephanie, and I realized that I used the term yard when I really meant fat yard, and the difference is um, a yard, like a square yard, would be 36 by 36. But again, which we we'll reiterate over and over in the video, um, when you're talking about fabric cuts, the yard measurement is the side, but then the um, fat refers to the fact that it's wider than 36. Um, on um, it goes all the way to the end of the like the fabric's length. So when I say yard in this video, unless I specifically say 36 inches, I mean a fat yard. And hello from Starbucks in Oklahoma City. People really don't stitch a whole yard. You will see, pe see people buy yards of fabric, but the most common and all other names of fabrics kind of come from the yard. So we're gonna start there. And I was totally confused and wrong about the way that fabrics were cut until I like, not until I did the research for this, but until a, a few months ago when I was doing the research for like, why are these even named these things? So a yard of fabric, sewers and quiltists will know this, and this is probably something you already knew. Yeah, I knew it from sewing, but, but not if, it. I hadn't even thought of it. You might think like I did, well, a yard of fabric is a yard on each side. It's a square yard, and that's not what a yard of fabric is. <laughs> A yard of fabric is when they take the bolt of fabric and they cut a yard, like they cut off 36 inches, which is a yard, but they cut it all the way to the end. So it might be 44 inches wide, it might be 50 inches wide. So it's it's the, it's one side of the fabric, but it does not determine how like long the other side of the fabric goes, which is why like you might think a fat quarter would be nine by nine because that's, you know, one fourth of a yard by one fourth of a yard, but it's not. <laughs> that quarter is a very different measurement of fabric. So <clears throat> if you understand that a yard is 36 inches on one side and however long your fabric is on the other, it makes it a lot easier to then see like, okay, well, what are these other measurements that are more standard? Um, so co a common measurement for a yard of fabric in the cross stitch world is 36 by 54. Now, all of these are in inches, and us American girlies, we love thinking about this in inches, but when I was researching this, I did have to, I did come across some places where they were explaining to like European yeah. um, or African audiences, well, like these measurements that we're selling are in inches, but like you have, and then converting them to centimeters, which is what people, cause, cause you know, we're talking about an imperial system and as my husband grew up with a metric system, likes to argue with me about, I think that I love the imperial system and I personally prefer it, but if you're not used to it, you might, you might be like, oh, this is another case where those Americans or even those Brits are messing up. <laughs> Cause you know, even the things we use that are imperial that the Brits don't use anymore, like yeah. came from there. So, all right. So yard is 36 by however long the bolt is all the way to the end. And 
in uh, cross stitch that is commonly 36 by 54. So if you're shopping on one, two, three stitch, you can see 36 by 54, that is a yard of fabric. Now, a fat half is the next most common, well, not the next most common, sorry. The fat half is the next size down from a, a yard of fabric. And a fat half is where they take the, the longest edge of the bolts of fabric and they cut that in half. So a fat half yeah. <laughs> in cross stitch is commonly around 27 by 36. Oh. So they took that 54, which was the longest edge, and they sliced that in half. So the 36 carries in this situation. And so now this is the 30, the original 36 by 27. Now within cross stitch fabrics, you might see differences one to three inches. Like, you know, one dyer's fat half might be, you know, 34 by like whatever. Like you'll see small differences. So when I tell you like what the measurements are, don't feel like you're getting like a bad deal if it's one or two inches different because people sometimes just will be more cautious because they don't want to worry about like slubs or cutting. There might be remnants or they might, they're working off larger bolts, then they're really not taking like a fat yard and, or a yard and cutting in half. So don't worry if your fat half is slightly different, but the, like a, uh, if you were to take a yard of typical cross stitch fabric and just cut it in half, it is 27 by 36. And the, the fat part of it refers to cutting it in a way that maintains the most stitchable area. Or so sometimes we'll see these referred to as like a stitcher's half or a stitcher's quarter instead of a fat half or a fat quarter. I, I think that I've seen that in a lot of like, I want to say Canadian things, but I don't know if it's more of a Canadian term or not, but I have seen like, I think on traditionalstitches.com, I was looking at their like sign linen and I think, I think it was them that were selling them as stitchers quarters, but I'm not 100%. I didn't go back and look at the website, just, but yeah. Uh, editing Stephanie here again. So I went on the traditional stitches website to see if they were the website that referred to them as stitchers quarters and they weren't, but I know that that is a term that is used, but the, they do list them differently than we do in the States, their Canadian website, and they list them as wide quarters and wide eights, which is probably a kinder, more friendly term. I wouldn't be shocked if in 20 years we were saying that in the States too, but as of right now, you will still hear the term fat quarter in the U.S. I don't know how widespread, pun intended, a uh, wide quarter is in Canada. If you're Canadian, feel free to chime in in the comments. Uh, so for this fat half, <laughs> A skinny half would be if they had taken the 36 and cut it in half instead. And you would then have the exact same amount of fabric, but you have less stitchable area. But sometimes people need that cut might be better for a particular design. I have a kit where I have a skinny, a skinny cut instead of a fat cut. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. But let's say you take your fat half. So we took the cord, uh, yard and we cut it and we made this fat half. Now, a skinny half would be 18 by 54 if, we, if they had cut it the other way. Now, um, a fat quarter. So for this fat quarter, you would take the longest edge. And now that's a fat quarter. But that's a very common cut of fabric. And you'll see people sell fat quarters all the time. And I think this is the most common cut for... Uh, like fabric of the month clubs and it's it's the most common cut for people to just be like oh I want to buy some of it so I got a fat quarter because you could get several like there are a lot of samplers and designs thing. where like a fat quarter is the only like would fit on just like would only handle that one but then there's also a lot of times where like yeah a fat quarter will handle two or three and by then you might be kind of bored using the same fabric anyway so but if just to compare we took this half and you can see that they are here. Roughly, <laughs> right there, the same. They're the same, and yeah. like I said, being off by like an inch or two is normal. Now I have um, a bell pull project uh, where I needed a skinny quarter because it's a bell pull. It's really long, and so instead of a fat quarter, which is this, which has the largest stitchable area, they cut it in that longer way. All right, a fat quarter. Common um, measurements you'll see for fat quarter. Like the purest in this would be like an 18 by 27, but like 18 by 25 is really common. And with Ada's actually, I should have mentioned this early, but with Ada's, it's common for it to be like 18 by 22 or something like sometimes Ada, 
a lot of the world's linen used in our world is created by just two or three companies. And so a lot of the measurements tend to be the same, but Ada is produced by a few more people. And so has more different options. All right, so that is a fat quarter. Now, if you take this fat quarter and you were to cut it this way, you'd have a skinny eighth. And there's a lot you could do with it. Like I'm thinking of those like drawn thread Like things. a drum. Yeah, yeah, drums. So you do see skinny quarters for sale, but or uh, skinny eighths for sale, but most commonly you see a fat eighth, which is where you take your fat quarter and you cut it down to a fat eighth. So I bought this, these are the same fabric. I bought a fat quarter and a fat eighth. I thought I bought a fat half though. That's a whole story for another time. <laughs> but another it. place, another email too. Oh God. Um, well, I, think it'll, I think it'll work out. But, um, but as you can see, the fat eighth is really just literally half of a fat That's quarter, half. but folded in a way so you have the most stitchable area. And, but like we said, if you needed a, um, a skinny eight, I think a, a skinny eights are not a commonly sold. Like this is a very common cut of fabric to buy, mm -hmm. a fat eight. Um, and this fat eight is 13 by 18, which is, yeah, the most common. Like that would be if you had almost no waist. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so that you can see that I bought this from one, two, three stitch. This is from Lindy Stitches. Like these are just common cuts of fabric. Um, and fat eights are really great for like, this, I, I'll, you'll see a lot of fat eights is like what one, two, three stitch recommends you buy for designs because it's the smallest piece that will fit that design. But if you were to buy it yourself, you might decide I'm gonna buy a fat quarter and then save the rest of the fabric yeah. for something else. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty common. I think it, yeah. Especially for people who like to stash. Yeah. Yeah. I know, Just saying. I know about stash. But when I order, like if I like like all those artsy housewives patterns that I kitted up last year, mm -hmm. and I'm like looking through and at what came in those kits, like yeah. a lot of them were fat eights yeah. or, or even smaller actually. So let's say you get smaller than a fat eight. Well, it is technically a fat 16th, but almost by this point, no one is using those terms anymore. Um, and a fat 16th is literally, you guessed it, I shouldn't have put it away, but <laughs> it's just if you take the fat eighth and you fold it so that you have the most stitchable area, you get a fat 16th. Okay, so. Yep. And then look. That's a fat 16th. Now, you can see this is a, one I pulled from a project that I should have put in the mail last week. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but, um, and a fat 16th, again, give or take thing, you know, give or take a few inches is usually about nine by 13. Sometimes by that time, it's really nine closer to like nine or eight by 12, but that would all be in the fat 16th area. But people, you really won't hear that term very much thrown around, but just know that that's literally what it is. It's just, you're continuing to get smaller. That is kind of the smallest cut of fabric that comes from like cutting things down. Like they don't really like pre-cut. Right, they, they, you can find pieces this size, but they don't really do that as much. Um, the next size down that you see that's pretty common is called an ornament cut, and it's not really a measurement based on a yard at all. It's a nine by nine inches is a common ornament cut um, because a lot of Christmas and holiday ornaments are three by three, and that gives you a nice good border. And so like, this is the piece I bought at the Silver Needle. Oh. as an ornament cut was nine by nine. That's interesting. I did not know that either. Um, so yeah, if you see, like a lot of people do their ornaments just on like leftover pieces of fabric from other projects, which is why a lot of people do like to have larger pieces of fabric than what they call for, because then they get these like extra little pieces and that's less expensive usually than buying them separately. Right. However, if you if you were to go into like um, your LNS and ask for an ornament cut, they would most likely give you a nine by nine. They might have a slightly different take on what that size is, but um, all right. So the last piece of fabric size that you will see commonly talked about isn't a standard size at all. It's called a remnant. So a lot of times where like, you know, dyers like Forbidden Fiber Co. I bought a remnant package of them. They'll make their fat quarters and things in the month and ever and every once in a while they take up all the leftover pieces of fabric that are like not traditional sizes anymore and they will sell them kind of as is. So this was a remnant. I do think it is pretty close to this size. It might even be exactly the size, but it was not sold that way. It was just sold as a leftover. But then this is also a remnant. 
So a remnant is not like a standard size. It's just, these are the pieces left over that we, we no longer sell whatever size this is, or maybe it's down to like an irregular size. And I love buying remnant bundles because you'll get colors and to try things you wouldn't use. And then also, because they're kind of weird, you can just measure them and write on like however you store your fabric, like what that size is. And then later you can be like, oh, I have this design that's this size and I have this weird piece and like, this will be this will be great. It's so it's, mm -hmm. it's fun for people who like to stash or experiment, but it's not something where you're gonna go in this, you're not gonna go in the store and ask for a remnant. But if you're asking for an ornament cut, what happened, I was asking for an ornament cut and they said, well, we have this remnant and if you don't have us cut it, it's less expensive. So I got more fabric than I would have gotten, which was great. Yeah. And then um, this, it's just like, oh, just like a grab bag of random pieces of fabric. And, and some will be standard sizes and some won't be, but everything in that bag is now a remnant because we're not going to try to figure it out and sell it to you. Yeah. Like based on size anymore. It's just, and in remnant bags, it's common for them to be like, there'll be a total of a half yard of fabric but it will be four to six pieces and different colors and different counts. And like, it's just really grab bag fun. Um, I think also like, that sounds like something that would be fun if you were experimenting, like you didn't know yet what your count, yeah. what your linen or Ada or whatever. I think that would be fun. Um, also like color and cotton and other like dyers will do like, sometimes they'll mix their remnants with their mist dyes. So you could get colors that they wouldn't normally sell. And sometimes like Besitch Me does a remnant bag and she doesn't even, um, Brandy doesn't even, won't label what the color is. So even if it's color she sells, she's trying to get them out the door and just like get her like, space back and just give you a good deal. And so she's not even gonna stop and spend two days labeling all the pieces of fabric. It's just right. get them out the door. Right. So that is really fun, but you may not always be able to like replicate. Whereas like this, I know this is Waterfall by Forbidden Fiber Co. It's so pretty. I actually was hoping maybe she'd have some for sale for the Deadly Aquarium sale, but she didn't. Um, but it's okay because I got something else. Oh, cool. Which um, I already posted on Instagram, but it'll be here. I'll show you on the next. Uh, but anyway, so that is all about fabric cut names based on their measurements. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, our if you next, have any knowledge, leave it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. We These are so good because, like, Allison's been stitching for years. I've been stitching for almost a year, but I am a writer by trade. And so I like spend my like daytime doing this in the world of travel. So it's really fun to apply those skills to cross stitch the research and the yeah, topics yeah. and stuff. So <laughs> we love this stuff, but yeah. we also know some of you guys have 30, 40 years of stitching experience. So feel free to leave any information in the comments you want to leave. Yeah. And then also, um, our next video, our next well, our next um, video that comes out on Monday will be one of our regular floss tubes or floss tube extras. But then the next tutorial is going to be about like specific brand city type names for fabrics and like what those are, which we're excited about, which I have a lot to share because it was crazy. The research was crazy. Um, if you got to this point in the video um, and you want to leave like uh, leave a, a pink heart emoji. So um, there'll be our secret language that you made it this far. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, subscribe on Mondays. We either come out with like big, long videos about our personal stitching, which is fun, or- She means long. Long, right? which people- Get some popcorn. Which okay. people like. But also <laughs> then every other Monday we come out with like more intermediate or advanced topics that are fun. Like, yeah. you know, like how to make a needle minder or like, um, you know, like cross stitch magazines, just like different random things. So go ahead and subscribe and we'd love to hear anything you have to say in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye.